<coughs> Excuse me? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back here in a black bulk. Excuse me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to mute my phone. I'm sorry. Welcome! Okay, so earlier today, while I was looking for video ideas in the comments section, because that's where I get my ideas, because sometimes you just run out and you just go to your comments and look for things. So someone asked me um, how to set up emotes in Blockbird, but that also gave me another idea to just make a helpful guide for beginners, sort of. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert at Blockbird, but I play it every single day and I have a 200 visit streak. I've been playing this game for about three years now. I would say I'm a quote unquote expert and I'm here to help all of you beginners I'm, I know most of the ins and outs of this game, at least most of it. Am I still a good builder? No, I'm not a good builder. So this first tip is I'm going to teach you guys how to, you know, set up emotes. I have a bunch of emotes here and some people are like curious like, Oh my gosh, how do you get all those emotes and stuff? This is for the people that don't know. If you already know it, good for you, okay? I'm teaching the new people. So what you have to do for emotes is you go to, okay, this, I don't know why I chose this house, but <laughs> I made this house yesterday. So what you do is get yourself a dresser or something, you know, it could be one of these. It could be like a regular dresser. It could be a clothing rack and you just go to here and you click customize character and through there, oh my God, I'm bald. Why do I not have hair, but I have my accessories. I don't know. I think for beginners, you only have like one here. For those that are wondering how you get outfit slots as well, you have to buy them with block bucks. Um, you just go to your outfit. You just click this third tab here is like a person like a little body this is where you have like faces and stuff and packages you can use but if you click here you can go to the emotes directly and it'll have a bunch of the emotes that they added in the game so if you want to add emotes to your little emote wheel all you have to do is just click on something like oh i had i don't have dizzy so maybe i'll just buy this i want dizzy make sure it's blue it's highlighted blue and then you click select and it'll be added to your emote wheel pretty simple pretty easy you just need a dresser and yeah, you have your emotes now, so I'm gonna look for Dizzy. Here it is. I can use Dizzy now. My head is spinning. So helpful tip number two, best starting game passes to use if you're gonna get any. If you have the extra Robux that you're willing to spend on this game, you know, you really wanna get into it. There are some really good beginner game passes that, that you should get. So there's a few game passes here in Bloxburg that you might be wondering what should be the best option. For beginners, premium. Premium is basically, um, you get double daily login rewards. You also get halved bills. And if you have, let's say $3,000 to pay off on your house bills, with premium, it goes down by half. 50% basically so half of 3,000 is 1,500 so I would say premium is pretty worth it for that if you don't like spending money on bills get premium because it'll lower it um, you also get to choose your own plot location so you don't get stuck with a random plot um, in the neighborhood there's a lot of benefits to it um, another game pass uh, I would go for with beginners is advanced placement because I go crazy without this thing on. So if you're like in build mode, all right? Kitchens are my number one nightmare if I don't have advanced placement. You guys might've seen that in a previous video. Okay, let's get ourselves a counter here. Look at that. Look at this. All right, I'm using large grit, which is pretty ideal for whatever reason. Why? Why is this not enough space? If you do have advanced placement, it's so much easier to place things down. I don't know, that's just a me problem. It's also good for building hacks if you're into trying to like make up your own type of furniture that you don't see in the game. And another game pass I would also recommend getting is Excellent Employee. So if you're a beginner, you're really not gonna have a lot of money. Excellent Employee is gonna help you out, help you a lot with making money in this game. And it also promotes you faster. I'll get more into that later, but definitely get Excellent Employee. That's pretty good if you wanna make bank. All right, so number three, this is a build mode feature. So there are hotkeys in build mode if you're on PC and or Mac. Um, mobile, I don't think mobile has really hotkeys. I mean, you use your fingers to build anyway, right? If you're on a laptop computer or like a Mac, there are some hotkeys that you can use. And I pretty much use these regularly when I build because I always build a lot. So the first thing is the garbage can. G for garbage. Press G on your keyboard for garbage. And another thing, if you want to copy, like this is the stamp tool here, basically copies things or not. C for copy. Pretty easy, pretty simple. G for garbage, C for copy. Another thing is coloring things. You can press F on your keyboard. Quick paint something just shift click it actually tells you right there shift click it's a quick paint and those are the things at the bottom there i don't know if there's any other hotkeys but there's also page up and page down on your keyboard too if you want to go up and down a floor um control z is also another 
nice little hotkey if you want to undo something so like let's say you made a wall and you're like oh wait i don't like that one you can just press Control z on your keyboard both at the same time and it'll get rid of that but if you're like oh wait i kind of liked it just press Control y and that will bring it back up without you having to click on i believe those are all the hotkeys in build mode um, if i missed any i'm sorry i'm gonna label this video as may be helpful so this is helpful tip number four did you guys know you can scale up two things at once this doesn't work with all the skills but for some of them it does work so i have a couple of things here so with this computer here you can write a book you know get your writing skill up you can also read the book too so that will basically level up your intelligence and your writing skill um, you can also do the same thing with playing games like if you want to level up your gaming skill and then you can also read the book too another thing level up instruments and you can also level up your intelligence too by playing a song then grabbing a book yeah you're doing the two things at once so this is very helpful for people who level up more than one skill at a time you can also even do this with athletic you know run on a treadmill grab a book i don't think you can play an instrument while you're running yeah i don't i don't think that's possible you can't do that and you can even pick up guitars too and read a book i, I did not know this but you can i think you can do this with painting as well so let me paint and then read a book yeah you can level up painting and intelligence too but cooking requires your full attention i believe gardening requires your full attention as well and i believe that is it all right so tip number five it's also a build mode feature so let's say you're building a house let me just get some examples going let's say you're building a house and you you know you made a room you know you made a room in here and you want to color that room only only this room but you're like oh wait I can't color this room only because it's connected to this side too. What you do is you exit out of build mode. <laughs> Go back into build mode and your rooms should be um, disconnected now. So yeah, look at that. Easy. This was the easy like building tip. Pretty easy to disconnect your walls and stuff. Like they'll be separated. Like, look at that. It's pretty good. And yeah, that's building tip number five. If you want to separate your rooms and stuff, just exit out of build mode and you want to color things. Tip number six, don't make seizure flooring or seizure roof. This is a common mistake that lots of beginner builders happen to make. And even sometimes me, I, you know, I also make this mistake. But if you don't know what a seizure floor or a seizure roof or a seizure wall is, okay, I'll, I'll show that. I'll gladly show you what um, I mean. Sometimes people just, you know, they, they use the, the automatic placements and stuff. Let's, let's build like a little room, all right? Basically, a seizure floor is when you have two floors built in the same spot. So like some, maybe some person probably like made a little triangle here and then they build another like part like this. Like so and then they color it differently so you have like two different colors going on and then same thing with the roof sometimes your roof can have a seizure so people will probably like use an auto roof and then they'll probably build like another roof on top of that you know like you'll have two roofs on at the same time some people forget some people don't even realize they have two roofs on. i don't know if you can have seizure walls i think you can have seizure walls but um flooring and the roof flooring and roofing is what i commonly see with seizures so like look at this this is what I call a seizure floor. It just doesn't know how to act, okay? You have like two floors going on. And then this is how I, yeah, this, oh my God, oh my God, seizure roof, oh God. Best way to not do this is just to have one floor at a time, you know? Look at that, I already fixed it. I'm gonna remove the flat roof and look at that, one roof. Look, I already fixed it, very easy. Just make sure your floors and your roofs don't overlap with each other. Like if you're coloring them, at least color them the same or just put one roof, you know? That's how you, that's the best way to not have seizure flooring. All right, tip number seven, and I think this is also gonna tie with number eight as well. Number seven is the best way to make money in this game. And I've already done a separate video on this too before, but you know, I might as well include it in this video since it's a helpful beginner's guide. And for new people who haven't seen that other video, pizza delivery tips. If you have premium, I highly suggest spawning your house if possible directly behind Pizza Planet because it's just very convenient. But basically, um, if you want to make money in this game, pizza delivery should be your go one of your go-to jobs for making money because it's super easy. It may be a little bit boring. You need to make a workstation, which includes a fridge, a little table with a coffee maker on it. You also need a, like, a little bathtub, a bed right next to it that's optional, um, and a TV, a wall TV, or it could be on a table. It doesn't really matter, but this is basically a workstation. It's not the prettiest. You can choose to make it pretty if you like. The station is to fill up all your moods. The higher the mood, the more money you will make, and this is a proven fact, okay? It's normal. So you just watch TV, get your fun up, get your hygiene up as you're in the bathtub. You're also getting your energy up too, because you're in the bathtub, you're laying down, you're relaxing, and also, this table is handy for the coffee maker, which will also make your energy go up faster. And you can also put food on it. You then can fill up your hunger as well. 
There's no need to actually drive there, just teleport because then you your moods won't go down as you're driving there. Okay, and then here's another tip, like to keep you motivated, what I normally do when I first start working, you grab your pizza and you figure out where your customer is. So I actually have a really close customer, but if you don't have a close customer your first try, all you have to do is just come out here and shift and then try again. This will help to motivate you to keep going because some people lose motivation, they get bored really fast. But um, I'm pretty sure if all of us had close customers, we would keep working, right? Just to motivate you to start working, always make your first customer your closest. So you just go on your moped and you deliver the pizza. You don't want to reset your customer all the time because there's no point in that anymore. You get more money as you keep delivering pizzas. So I only do it the first time because it'll motivate me to keep going. So if you're like two deliveries in and you reset, you're going to have to go back to stage one. Higher level, more money, better moods, more money. And one last thing, um, we all know about this, but if you're working as a delivery person and you want your moves to go back up so that way you can make the most money, just go back to your workstation. Look at that. Wow, I just made $5,000. Wow, just trying to teach you guys. But yeah, that is basically it for this helpful tips and tricks for a beginners episode. Hopefully, I was able to help some of you guys with some of these things. If you guys did enjoy this episode, you found it interesting, dumb, silly, or inspiring, or motivating, especially if it helped you as well. Like, if this video helped you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to continue watching any other Roblox videos on the channel, Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It is completely free. Thank you all for taking the time every day to watch this. I'll talk to you in the next videos. Stay tuned. Stay awesome. Have a wonderful day. Peter Bread signing out. Goodbye, everybody.